Uh, welcome to this chapel this morning where uh, Christy will be sharing with us. We're excited that uh, she's chosen to do that. And um, I have a few announcements I'd like to remind you about for uh, the next few days. Um, Mass will be here on uh, Saturday evening. Last week it was a little interrupted uh, because of chapel drama, but we're back on schedule this week. Um, but Sunday Night Vespers is a special event. Um, Annually, uh, we have the Christie Lecture. Um, for those of you who don't know or haven't participated or come to those before, uh, they are in honor of Dr. Wayne Christie, who was a professor of religion here at Westminster for many years, but also was a foundational um, proponent, really, of the women's softball uh, team here, and uh, the field is named after him, and um, he was quite an inspirational person. And so the lectures every year uh, reflect that. Um, we invite someone who is inspirational in some way or another, and this Sunday night at 7 o'clock, um, Anthony Griggs will be our inspirational speaker for this year's Christie Lecture. He's a former NFL player and a trainer and a life coach and uh, quite an interesting person. He's worked with many sports teams and a lot of interesting people. And his uh, title will be Having Courage to Make Bold Faith Decisions. And so we're looking forward to that. Sunday night at 7 here in the chapel. Uh, on Monday, chapel's service in the morning will be the uh, team from Georgetown, South Carolina that was our Habitat team uh, that went there for spring break. We'll be sharing their experience. And then next Friday will be uh, Corey Gribbins Senior Chapel. Um, Next Saturday, um, if you're still interested and have a group of folks that might want to be um, participating, it's Bowl for Kids Sake at Colonial Lanes just down the road by Giant Eagle. Um, they will, uh, the Westminster time slot will be in the afternoon from 2 to 3. Uh, teams are still uh, welcome. If you want to do that, it's $30 per person or um, raising $30 and it's a great uh, charity. A lot of folks from our campus over the years have been involved with big brothers and big sisters. Ministry groups and so forth meeting next week will be on a regular schedule. Um, there will be a special event Tuesday night for all women on campus. It will be the last uh, in the series of Captivating Women, so it will be the beautiful bash at 9.30 in the Witherspoon Rooms. Newman Club Seekers will both meet on Wednesday at their regular times, FCA on Thursday. And then Habitat for Humanities meeting will be next Thursday, so watch out for all those things that are happening. Um, amongst us uh, a lot of opportunities for you to grow and worship. If you would, bow your heads and pray with me. Challenge us, God, for we grow weak. Our spiritual life becomes flabby and our minds become weary. Open us to your holiness. Confront us, God, for we grow lethargic. We let our spiritual life become an atrophy. Our hearts fail us and we don't want to risk anything. We pray that you would fill us, God, for we grow empty. Our strength weakens. Our energy leaves us and we need to be open to the enthusiasm of your presence in our lives. So renew us, God, when we become complacent, when our schedules overtake our lives, when our dreams seem to be untouchable. Let us be open to the presence of your spirit and its spontaneous touch. Amen. First verse, so you guys can understand how the melody goes. And then if you want to help us sing the second and third verse, you're more than welcome.
some say love it is a river that drowns the tender some say reading comes from the book of Romans chapter 5 verses 1 through 5. Therefore since we have been made right in God's sight by faith we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith Christ has brought us into this place of highest privilege where we now stand and we can confidently and joyfully look forward in sharing God's glory. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials for we know that they are good for us. They help us to learn to endure. And endurance develops strength of character in us, and character strengthens our confident expectations of salvation. And this expectation will not disappoint us. For we know how dearly God loves us, because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Hi, everybody. I just want to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you for coming to hear me speak today. It means more to me than you'll ever know. I've been thinking very hard for a very long time about the kinds of things I wanted to share with you. I couldn't think of one specific topic that stood out to me because so many things have strongly impacted my life in these last four years. So instead, I thought I'd share with you the lessons I've learned in my time here at Westminster. And I hope you can apply these lessons to your own lives. Number one, 
follow your dreams no matter how crazy they seem. I started off my college career as a Christian education major, followed by a philosophy major, and finally a psychology major. I always knew psychology was the path I wanted to go down, but the thought of going to grad school horrified me. So I tried to change my dream to fit what I could afford and what would get me a job the fastest. But after a period of time, I realized that dreams aren't meant to be convenient. They are meant to help you soar to new heights and accomplish things you never thought possible. And I also realized that you are in control of your life, of where your life will go. Too often have I had friends say that they're pursuing a career their parents want for them. But I can't imagine spending the rest of my life miserable just to make everyone else happy. Which leads me to my next point. Number two, don't forget to care about yourself. You matter even on those hard days when you aren't sure. I've wanted to be a therapist for as long as I can remember, and helping people was something that just felt right to me. The problem was that I felt like caring for myself at all would be selfish and wrong. I see that issue all around campus. This place is filled with some of the most thoughtful and beautiful people that I have ever met. And we all have a little trouble being there for ourselves, even when it's so easy to be there for everyone else. You are so, so important, and nothing will change that. You just can't forget it. Number three, be open to trying new things. Freshman year, I was terrified by the thought of making new friends. I mean, I hadn't had to worry about that since kindergarten, and now all of a sudden, I knew no one. Fortunately, I had an unbelievable roommate, Jamie Flaherty, who quickly became my friend and introduced me to so many more amazing people. It soon became spring semester, and I had decided to go through formal recruitment. Not because I was in love with the idea of being a sorority girl, but because my friends were doing it. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't a great reason at the time, but I wouldn't change it for anything. Kappa Delta has become something that is deeply rooted in my heart and something that I will never let go of. It's introduced me to some of my best friends and given me so much more than I could ever repay. Not to mention, I've met the most beautiful and genuine group of girls, and I may not have had the opportunity to know you if I hadn't have joined Katie. Also, I decided that during my, my first spring break, I wanted to go on a work trip to Edisto Island, South Carolina, with Jim, some friends, and some soon-to-be friends. I was nervous to go and worried that I would feel left out or not have a good experience, but looking back, I don't know what I was afraid of. I had an unbelievable time and got to help people in the process. I would never trade in that experience. I know being afraid is a horrible feeling, but you know what's worse? Regret. So yeah, try new things. It will most likely change your life. Don't let the fear of what's to come hold you back. Number four, take advantage of leadership opportunities. Being able to serve as the former president of Kappa Delta gave me so much knowledge and understanding of responsibility and problem solving that not only was beneficial to the sorority, but beneficial to my everyday life and life post-graduation. Also, being able to be a member of Slate Weast was something I never expected in a million years, but it was completely worth every second. I met some really amazing people and I hope to remain friends with them for a very long time. I can't believe I was given the chance to help out Westminster like it's helped me. These experiences shaped me and helped me be the best version of myself and for that I'm eternally grateful. Don't be afraid to take those steps to become an even more amazing person than you already are. You'll thank yourself in the long run. Number five, never forget where you came from. As amazing as this school has been, I could have never even dreamed of being here without my mom. She has been my solid rock throughout this whole experience and throughout my whole life. She's always reminded me to keep God in my life and to pray. Without her, I don't know where I'd be right now. Mom, can you stand up for a second? Please take a second to say hi to my mom before you leave today. <laughs> Her smile will brighten your world. I have a few really tremendous friends and family at home that have never given up on me and have believed that I could do anything. I guarantee you that no matter what our individual lives were like growing up, these people made us who we are today, and that is something to truly treasure. Number six, let other people help you. For a few years, I was a victim of sexual and physical abuse. Not many people knew about it, and I was afraid to tell people the truth about what was really going on. I thought I could handle it myself. I didn't think it was a big deal. I thought I deserved it, 
I thought it was my fault and no one would care if I told them. So I kept it quiet for a while. But then I made some amazing friends that helped me see that what was happening wasn't my fault and that I was worth so much more than how I was being treated. Without the help of the people who love me, I would still be in that dark place that I was in for a long time. Now, I never refuse anyone's help because I know it's those people who've changed my life. Maybe you haven't experienced something like that, or at least I hope not. But regardless, we can all use a little help sometimes. If someone puts in the effort to help you, don't turn them away. Listen to what they have to say, and just know that it is always coming from a good place. So many people love you, and you are worth it. Number seven, sing from your heart. There's a quote that says, music washes away from the soul the dust of everyday life. Now, if you know me at all, you know how much I love to sing, whether it sounds great or horrible. It's my passion, and I won't ever let anyone tell me I shouldn't sing at the top of my lungs. Yes, even in the tub during lunch, or on an airplane when everyone else is trying to sleep. <laughs> Have you ever felt that way? A passion just fills your soul, and you can't stop yourself from smiling. Well, that's what I mean by sing from your heart. Whatever your song is, sing it. Sing it loud and sing it proud. And if someone tells you they don't like your song, remind them that it's yours, not theirs, and then sing louder. <laughs> Number eight, don't ever take yourself too seriously. Please don't. Life would be boring and completely purposeless if you spent every day being serious. And again, if you know me at all, you know I can't take anything very seriously because laughing is entirely too much fun. Whether I'm roaming the halls of Ferg and laughing for hours for no reason with Katie, or watching the Teletubbies and 90s music videos on YouTube with my roommates, or watching Star Wars for six hours at Bai Ta, or making a tater tot casserole because we had a five pound bag of tots, so why not? I'm, <laughs> I'm constantly trying to find a reason to laugh. And trust me, it's not hard with the crazy friends I have. Laughter really is the best medicine. So remember to smile and laugh and do something ridiculous for no reason. Those are the memories that brighten a cloudy day and fill your life with meaning. Trust me, this school has taught me so much more than what I've learned in the classroom. I wish words did it justice. I just hope that what I've shared with you today has meant something to you. Amidst all of your schoolwork and grad school applications and meetings, remember to stop and give yourself a minute to take in the beauty that is Westminster College. You can't miss it. It's everywhere. Two things caught my attention. Dreams are not meant to be convenient. That's a great statement. Uh, that's something good for all of us to remember. Um, dreams are something that um, don't come easily sometimes. We have to work for them. But in that process, you run into people who uh, help you along and not refusing to accept people's help is a other great um, lesson that you've learned and I appreciate you sharing that because uh, too many times along our way in life we think it's our job to do everything and God does put people in our path for that very reason to help us along the way and refusing them is sort of like refusing God's help too so thank you for reminding us of, of those things let's pray Gracious God, you are good at reminding us of things that sometimes are very obvious, that we obviously miss because we're too busy or because we have chosen not to pay attention. The greatest thing that we can give you is our attention and the greatest thing we can give to one another is our attention. And that matters not only for the people that we do love, but also for the ones that we struggle to love. For the circumstances that are easy for us and for the circumstances we struggle to accept. For the work that we love to do and the work that we find difficult to do. We pray, Lord, that you would bless Christy as she 
moves forward in her life with the dreams that you have caught up for her. May she always be pursuing joy and laughter, whatever her path may be. As is the dream that you have for all of us, that we would live in joy and pursue happiness the kind that you give, not necessarily the kind the world gives. Be with us the remainder of this day. Be with us as we convene with our friends, perhaps meet new people. Be with us. In Christ's name, amen. Would you stand, please, and we'll send you out. May God bless you and keep you. May God make his face to shine upon you, upon those whom you love, and upon those whom nobody loves. And may he give you his peace this day and all days. Amen. Thank you.